dear students in this lecture i am going to discuss about project audit in the previous class i have discussed about control of change scope and scope creep so in this lecture i am going to discuss about project audit so the agenda for this lecture is first i will discuss about what is project audit then purpose of evaluation and goal of the system there i will discuss about what are the direct goals and ancillary goals then i will discuss about the project audit report format then i will compare financial audit versus project audit later i will discuss about depth of the audit and information in the audit report after that i will discuss about responsibilities of the project auditor or evaluator then what are the steps for carrying out the audit finally i will discuss about project audit life cycle in the previous lecture we discussed post control the post control cannot change the past but it tries to capture the essence of project successes and failures so that future projects can benefit from the past experience the project evaluation should be conducted at a several point during the life cycle for instance at major phase gates and especially if there is a crisp or major problem in the project a handy vehicle for evaluation a handy vehicle for evaluation is the project audit that is a formal inquiry into the any aspect of the project we associate the word audit with a detailed examination of financial matters but a project audit is highly flexible and may focus on whatever matters senior management desires what is project audit the project audit is a thorough examination of the management of a project its methodology and procedures it records its properties its budgets and expenditure and its degree of completion it may deal with the projects as a whole or only with a part of the project proactively determining how a project is performing through periodic project audit provides timely insight into the project that can be leveraged to increase the odds of successful project completion from a strategic perspective project audits play an essential role by helping ensuring the project success which subsequently translate into improved competitive success so whenever we do the project audit that indirectly helping to achieve our project competitiveness and the success now we'll discuss about the purpose of evaluation goals of the system shenhar has explained four dimensions for success of any project the first dimension is efficiency the second one is the funder impact and satisfaction the third dimension is businesses direct success then the future potential now we'll discuss about the purpose of this evaluation the purpose of evaluation or audit is here we use audit evaluation interchangeably one is to identify problems earlier clarify scope cost and time relationship improve project performance locate opportunities for future technological advances evaluate the quality of project management and reduce cost and improve the process of risk identification and management speed up the achievement of result identify mistakes remedy them and avoid them in the future provide information to the client reconfirm the organization's interest in and commitment to the project now we'll discuss about some of the direct goals so whatever the project objectives that will satisfy the funder satisfaction is called direct goals so we have to audit these direct goals apart from that we have to consider some ancillary goals also improve understanding of the ways in which the projects may be of value of the organization improve the process that is the one ancillary goals second ancillary goal is improve the process for organizing and managing projects better known as the firm's project management maturity provide information and experience for entering new markets the other ancillary goals are provide a conducive environment in which project team members can work creatively together 
identify organizational strength and weakness in project related personnel, general management and decision making techniques and systems. Then identify and improve the response to risk factors in the firm's use of projects. Allow access to project policy decision making by external stakeholders. Improve the way projects contribute to the professional growth of the project's team members. Identify project personnel who have high potential for managerial leadership. These are the ancillary goals. Now, we will discuss about the project audit format. So, the formal report audit report may be presented in various formats, but should contain comments on the following points. One is the status of the project. Here it should mention does the work completed match the planned level of completion? Then it has to discuss about the future status. Are significant schedule, cost, scope changes likely? If so, indicate the nature of the changes. The third point is the status of crucial task. What progress has been made on task that could decide the success or failure of the project? The fourth mention that we excerpt from here audit report is risk assessment. What is the potential for the project's failure or monetary loss? The next comment that is expected from the project report is information pertinent to other projects. What lessons learned from the audited project can be applied to the other projects undertaken by the organization? Then the limitation of the audit. What assumptions or limitations affect the data in a audit. Now, we will discuss about the primary differences between financial audit and the project audit. Note that the project audit is not the financial audit. The audit processes are similar in that each represents a careful investigation of the subject of the audit, but the output of these processes are quite different. The principal distinction between the two is that the financial audit has a limited scope. It concentrates on the use and preservation of the organization's asset. The project audit is far broader in scope and may deal with the project as a whole or any component or set of components of the project. This table compare the differences between financial and project audit. So, with respect to status. Financial audit confirms status of business in relation to accepted standard, but the project audits must create basis for and confirm the status of the project with respect to predictions. Financial audit companies state of economic well being. So, it predicts companies state of economic well being, but the project audit predicts future status of the project with respect to measurement. In financial audit, mostly we are measuring only the financial terms, but in the project audit, financial terms plus schedule, progress, reserves usage, status of ancillary goals. Then with respect to record keeping system, with respect to financial audit, format dictated by the legal regulations and professional standards. For project audits, no standard system uses any system desired by individual organization are dictated by the contract. Then with respect to existence of information system, for financial audit minimum records needed to start an audit, but for project audit no record exists, data bank must be designed and used to start the audit. Then with respect to recommendations, so from the financial audit usually few or none often restricted to management of accounting system. All the recommendations are related to management of accounting system, but for a project audit often required and may cover any aspect of the project or its management. Then qualification to the audit report, customary to qualify statement if conditions dictate, but strong managerial pressure not to do so, but for the project audit qualifications focus on shortcomings of audit processes like lack of technical expertise, lack of funds or time. Now, we will discuss about the depth of the audit. There are several practical constraints that may limit the depth of the project auditors investigation. 
the two important limitations here is time and money. So, time and money are two of the most common limit on the depth of the investigation and the level of detail presented in the audit report. Of course, the audit evaluation processes incurs additional cost beyond the standard professional and clerical time spent. Accumulation, storage and maintenance of auditable data are essential cost element. First, no matter how skilled the evaluator is, an audit or evaluation process constantly distract those working on the project. Worrying about the audit result can lead to an excessive self protective activity, reducing project activity and causing a decrease in overall performance. Second, if the evaluation report is not written with a constructive tone, project morale will suffer. Depending on the severity of the drop in morale, work on the project may receive a severe setback. Now, we will discuss about the timing of the audit. Given that all projects of significant size or importance should be audited, the first audit are usually done early in the project's life. The sooner a problem is discovered, the easier it is to deal with. Early audits are often focused on the technical issues to ensure that critical technical problems have been solved or under competent attack. Ordinarily, audits done later in the life cycle of a project are of less immediate value to the project, but are of more value to the parent organization. As the project develops, technical issues are less likely to the matter of the concern. Conformity to the schedule and budget becomes the primary interest of any audit activities. So, management issues are significant matters of interest for audits made late in the project's life that is disposal of equipment or reallocation of project personnel. Post project audits are conducted with several basic objectives in mind. The objectives are first a post project audit is often a legal necessity because the client specified such an audit in the contract. Second, the post project audit is a major part of post project report which is in turn the main source of managerial feedback to the parent firm. Third, the post project audit is needed to account for all projects, property and expenditure. Now, we will discuss about the format and use of audit report. The type of project being audited and the uses of which audit is intended dictate some specific of the audit report format. Within any particular organization, however, it is helpful to establish a general format to which all audit reports must conform. The audit report serve as a communication tool for project managers, auditors and organizational management ensuring a shared understanding and expectations. Now, we will discuss about the timing and the value of project audits. If the timing is project initial stage, so significant value if audit take place early that is prior to 25 percentage of completion of initial planning stage. Then at the time of feasibility study, it is a very useful when you do auditing at the time of feasibility study, particularly the technical audit. Then the preliminary plan and schedule budget. At this time, the audit is very useful particularly for setting measurement standards to ensure conformance with the standards. Then at the time of baseline schedule, it is less useful because the plan is frozen, flexibility of team is limited. Then evaluation of data by project team marginally useful, team defensive about the findings and at the time of implementations, if you do the auditing, what are the value? More or less useful at the time of implementation depending on importance of project methodology to successful implementation. Suppose the auditing is done after the project, post project, more or less useful depending on applicability of finding to future projects. Now, we will discuss about some of the informations in the audit report. The following items cover the minimum information that should contained in the audit report. 
first is the introduction this section contains a description of project to provide a framework of understanding for the reader project objectives must be delineated the project proposals may be beneficial to include explanatory parts as an addendum to the report if the objectives are complex the second thing is what we are expecting from audit report is current status status should be reported as of the time of the audit and among other things should include the following measures of performance it has to say about the cost schedule scope and quality the next thing we expect from the project audit report is future project status this section contains the auditor's conclusion regarding the progress together with recommendations for any changes in technical approach schedule or budget that should be made in the remaining task the fourth thing we expect from the audit report is critical management issues all issues that the auditors feels requires close monitoring by senior management should be included in this section along with a brief explanation of the relationship between these issues and the objectives of the project a brief discussion of time cost scope trade off will give the senior management useful input information for decisions about the future of the project the next important things we expect from the audit report is risk management this section should contain a review of major risk associated with the project and their projected impact on project time cost scope if alternative decision exist that may significantly alter future risk they can be noted at this point in this report once again we note that the audit report is not the proper place to second guess those who wrote the project proposal the next we expect caveats limitations and assumptions this section of the report may be placed at the end or may be included as a part of the introduction the editor is responsible for the accuracy and the timeliness of the report but a senior manager still retains full responsibility for the interpretation of the report and for any actions based on the timings now we'll discuss about responsibilities of the project auditor or evaluator the first and foremost responsibility for an auditor is tell the truth this statement is not as simplistic as it might appear it is a recognition that various level of truth are associated with any project the auditor must approach the audit objectively and ethically and assume responsibility for what is included and excluded from the consideration in the report now we'll discuss about the steps of carrying out an audit process if it is a small project assemble a small team of experienced experts familiarize the team with the requirement of the project audit the project on site after completion debrief the project's management produce a written report according to the pre specified format distribute the report to the project manager and the project team for their response follow up to see if the recommendations have been implemented these are the steps for executing an audit now finally we'll discuss about the project audit life cycle because the project audit is a routine activity so the first one is project audit initiation next stage is project baseline definition next establishing an audit database then preliminary analysis of the project then audit report preparation and the project audit termination we'll discuss about each stages the first stage is project audit initiation this step involves starting the audit process defining the purpose and scope of the audit and gathering sufficient information to determine the proper audit methodology second stage is project baseline definition this cycle phase normally consist of identifying the performance areas to be evaluated determining standards for each area through benchmarking or some other processes ascertaining management performance expectations and developing a program to measure and assemble the requisite information 
The third stage in the project life cycle is establishing an audit database. Once the baseline standards are established, execution of audit begins. The next step is to create a database for use by the audit team. The fourth stage is preliminary analysis of the project. After standards are set and data collected, judgments are made. Some auditors avoid judgment on the ground that such a delicate but weighty responsibility must be reserved to senior management, but judgment often requires a sophisticated understanding of the technical aspect of the project and of the statistics and probability subjects that may elude some managers. The next stage is audit report preparation. This part of the audit life cycle includes the preparation of audit report organized by whatever format has been selected for use. A set of recommendations together with a plan for implementing them is also part of the audit report. If the recommendations go beyond normal practices of the organization, they will need support from the policy making level of management. The last stage is project audit termination. As with the project itself, after the audit has accomplished its designated task, the audit process should be terminated. When the final report and recommendations are released, there will be a review of audit process. This is done to improve method for conducting the audit. When the review is finished, the audit is truly complete and the audit team should be formally disbanded. Dear student, in this lecture, I have discussed about the purpose of evaluation goals of the system. There I discussed about the direct goals and ancillary goals of the evaluation system. Later I discussed about the timing of the audit. Then I have explained the format and use of audit report. Then I have explained timing and the value of the project audits and evaluations. Then I have discussed about the information in the audit report then responsibility of the project auditor. After that, I discussed about the steps for carrying out the audit. Finally, I have discussed about the project audit life cycle. Thank you.